According to the United Nations, the amount of money laundered globally is up to $2 trillion every year. I'm joined now by financial crime specialist Martin Woods. Martin, welcome. Now, that is a huge sum of money. How is the industry addressing this ongoing criminal activity? Not very well is the answer to that, Michael. Um, it's estimated that around the world we seize less than 1% of that $2 trillion. And that's just an estimate, because as you would imagine, drug dealers and money launderers do not submit returns somewhere. So it could actually be more than that. Um, and it's, it's failing at every single level. So the man in charge of anti-money laundering at a global level, David Lewis, is the executive secretary of the Financial Action Task Force, earlier this year told a media, org media organisation, we are all doing badly and some are not doing as badly as others. And that's a terribly, nonetheless, honest indictment of our colossal failure in this space. So what are the current issues that compliance officers and compliance professionals are facing right now? Well, it's a policy issue as much as anything else, and it's, uh, they are looking for an identity because if you look at penalties awarded for financial crime or given out, they're very much reduced. And we've become a hub of fraud, but more specifically, it's online fraud. You're far more likely to be mugged online nowadays than you are walking down the street. The criminal landscape has changed significantly, but law enforcement, public policy has not kept pace. And as a consequence, criminals get away with it more and therefore are encouraged to do yet more. Why that leaves a compliance officer is, what do I do here and, and what is public policy? Why am I engaging in all this in the endeavor? What's the end product? Now, interestingly, you mentioned about online and technology is extremely important, but it comes with both opportunity and risk. Tell us a bit more about the technology and about what those opportunities and risks are. Well, at the opportunity level, it's absolutely vital. If you look at major police investigations now, they never, ever take place without some kind of telephone, mobile telephone analysis, mobile telephone evidence. So we see the critical importance of technology in evidence cases. But for compliance officers, artificial intelligence can replicate a lot of their thinking and actually undertake analysis of vast sums of data and find anomalies. So it can help us a great deal, but it can also be a disadvantage because we can rely upon it too much. And as I just explained in my, my previous answer, when you look at the internet, it allows people to be anywhere at any time, to be unknown, to be hidden. And we need a different way of thinking to identify the issues. So coming back to compliance professionals, Martin, I mean, how do you see their role in this and helping to address this area of financial crime? Well, they need to be supported. They need to be given some sense that what they do really matters and is important. So at, at a public policy level, governments and regulators need to take action against offenders to make sure that we're protecting victims. Because this, the problem is not going to reduce unless we have a joined up endeavor and the compliance officer is supported. Nonetheless, most compliance officers are dedicated professionals who do want to make a difference, who do feel that what they do is important but they need support. And, you know, to that extent, what really needs to happen, it needs to be much more individual accountability for wrongdoers as against corporate accountability. We're about, we're, we've recently embarked upon this American adventure of um, deferred prosecution agreements, which is, there's no actual prosecution, there's no admission of guilt, but the big corporation pays a penalty. And essentially what you have here with some of these big scandals, PPI, for example, Initially, somebody did it, and then eventually everybody did it. And then along comes a regulator of law enforcement. It turns out nobody did it. It's, you know, you need wider support on public policy to help the, the dedicated compliant professional to see that there's some true outcome to his and her endeavours. Now, Martin, I imagine training must be key when it comes to a compliance professional. Absolutely. It, like in many industries, but experience and and engagement and connection. And one of our problems right now is this disconnection, this dislocation caused by COVID-19. And there is anxiety amongst senior financial crime professionals as to how we're developing young financial crime individuals, how we're mentoring these people. They're not in the office to learn hands-on experience. So there needs to be a strategy to develop them and to actually perhaps task them, to present to each other, because it's that interaction and engagement with the experienced professional that helps to develop them. And unfortunately, COVID at the moment has caused that to um, reduce from what it was, once was. And there's a problem for then for future financial crime investigations. 
Martin Woods, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.